Hello, it's Scott Manley here, and today I bring you a little bit of broken Kerbal physics. Now, you may remember this contraption from, well, 2013, four years ago. I demonstrated that by pumping fuel back and forth and rotating a vehicle, you could actually pick up velocity, or you could use it to change your velocity in violation of the laws of physics. And this was, of course, because there is a deficiency in the Kerbal engine. When you transfer fuel from one part to another, the momentum is not transferred. The mass goes magically. So I thought, let's bring this thing up to date using the modern Kerbal Space Program and modern mods. Instead of having the entire vehicle rotate, I'm using infernal robotic bearings to produce two counter-rotating fuel tanks. Then on top of that, I have Kerbal Operating System, which will automate the fuel transfer back and forth. Now, it wasn't perfect. It took several iterations to go through, and this was my first one. You'll note that because the rotation, although I've cancelled out the main rotation, right, by having two counter-rotating fuel tanks uh, arms, there is still a torque induced, and I needed to figure out a way to get rid of that. So I adjusted things a bit. So the optimized version made the arms a bit longer and moved the rotation plane, well, inside each other thing. Now, depending upon how your eyes are parsing this, it could look like a pair of kind of beaters swinging back and forth and bouncing off of each other, but it's actually two counter-rotating arms just magically passing through each other because, hey, Kerbal Space Program doesn't actually bother to do collision detection between parts attached to the same ship. And you thought we were simply going to be violating the conservation momentum. No, we're actually literally going to have parts of the ship phasing through each other magically. And the other thing I optimized was to ensure the fuel amount would be transferred exactly within 180 degrees so that the whole thing would neatly transfer back and forth on a proper cycle. Turns out there was a bug in the version of Kerbal operating system that I was using and uh, multiple transfers would start to conflict with each other so you needed to make sure the transfer completed before you allowed anything more to happen. The pilot does have an interesting view of proceedings incidentally with this giant pendulous mass swinging between his or her legs. No doubt quite a disconcerting view when you realise that it's violating the laws of physics. So how does it perform? Well, the whole thing takes a couple of seconds to rotate, and each rotation seems to provide about just under one meter per second of delta V. It seems that when I measured it, I was getting maybe 0.01 or 0.02 meters per second per second of acceleration. So getting from low Kerbal orbit out towards the moon takes a long time, but once you get up about above about 600 kilometers, you can finally get into a direct ascent trajectory towards whichever target you want to visit. And indeed, I did take this spacecraft all the way out towards the moon. I even uh, took it into orbit, but honestly, uh, the thing needed a little bit of tuning. Those tiny fuel tanks and the small resource transfer rate meant that uh, I had a very hard time getting any serious thrust out of it, so I applied my design skills and optimized things a bit more. So one of the obvious things to do was to replace the fuel with ore. Ore is more massive also, and uh, for the same size a tank, you can have a lot more mass in it. What really matters is the mass and how quickly you can transfer it. Now, by making them about uh, just over one third full, I can transfer the fuel across with a rotary speed of two, and based upon how quickly this whole thing turned around and stopped, accidentally of course, because my control was pretty limited, uh, I was getting over one meter per second per second of acceleration. That's a full one tenth of a G, and you know what that means. That's enough thrust to actually attempt a landing here. Now, for reasons of well, sheer laziness and in unfamiliarity with Kerbal OS. The script is actually pretty simple. What it does is it looks for two tanks with fuel in them and two tanks without fuel in them, and then arranges to transfer those fuels when the rotation states of the arms reach certain positions. So when a when a, a tank is fully forward, you want to start transferring the mass out of it to the one which is fully back. That's really all you want to do. And the nice thing about this, incidentally, is that if you then uh, disable the, the script and then open up the robotics and transfer the fuel backwards manually, 
you can actually make the thing run in reverse. However, to make sure that the thing didn't accidentally go into reverse, it had to reset itself to a known state after the whole process. So it would only run for a fixed number of cycles and then reset to a known configuration. And the way I controlled the amount of Delta V that I required was to have different versions of the scripts, some which ran more cycles and some which ran fewer cycles. So for the landing, I set the thing to only run five iterations and then pause. And that does make things slightly hard because it means that I have a fixed amount of Delta V that I can trigger and then I have to somehow make sure I come to a stop just above the surface with a sufficiently low altitude and low velocity that I land softly on these legs. Now it is possible for me to press Control C and stop the program running. However, if I do that, there is no guarantee that the drive system will be in a stable state for a restart. So if I do that at the wrong time, I could find my drive simply not working. Anyway, if the idea of a mechanism which turns a rotating system into a thrust in free space sounds familiar, that's because there have been more than a couple of people that have claimed to have invented such devices. There's, of course, Eric Lathwaite and Sandy Kidd, and even the, the, the famous Dean Drive, which uh, was, uh, were all supposed to be devices which produced thrust based on gyroscopes that were weighted in weird ways, and none of them work. They are all bogus. And this, of course, only works because of limitations in Kerbal Space Program's physics engine. Anyway, we're getting very close to the surface here, so very carefully apply this here. So you'll notice on the console it counts down the amount of thrust left here. So it does one, two, three, four, five, and that's going to reduce me to about 10 meters per second. So I'm now going to fire this off one last time as I get close to the surface and hope that it'll stop me just right. So I've got the command queued up and let's go. So I'm going to control C this when I get as close to the surface as I think I'm going to get and I'm stop I'm going upwards now let it just settle too late for me to reset the device and it's actually started out it, it you see how it's reset in the reverse configuration but that doesn't matter because these landing legs are super strong and Sigford Kerman becomes the first Kerbal to land using such a bizarre drive mechanism Okay, so let's actually reset the drive system here. So we've got no mass up here. What we just need to do is move this op open a little, and then we need to transfer the fuel forward. So just do that, transfer that. This will take a few seconds. The transfer rate apparently is hard-coded into Kerbal Space Program. If you could transfer faster than this, it would actually help build more powerful drive systems. But the modders, uh, they looked at the code, and it's, it's apparently a private variable. They can't tweak they can't change they're gonna to have to come up with some other way around that so uh, that's that reset now we put that in there and now I just run spin or five and spin or five will trigger the whole drive so let's actually just take a look at the code what we do is it says starting EM drive yes <laughs> reactionless drive system so we set the part list we look for all small holding tanks and if the amount of resource in it is greater than some value we put it in list a otherwise we put it in list b then uh well then we print out the list because of course i wrote this while trying to debug the whole thing first thing it does is it begins transferring the stuff backwards from the full tanks to the empty tank tanks uh, sorry actually it begins by transferring the fuel forward so that the transfer is is active and uh then yeah, then it immediately starts rotating. So it looks for the action groups for the it looks for the uh, rotation groups. It sets the speed, but apparently the speed doesn't matter because I messed around with it and it didn't do anything. But yes, asks for the uh, group to move, sets my list of servos, and it just looks at one of the servos, and then it begins a loop count. It waits until the servo is in position. Uh, greater than zero because of course it's going to start in that position and it'll pop out the position and then begin transferring in the opposite direction begin transferring from the full one to the empty one 
uh, then it waits until the server position has flipped around and become less than zero. Now, in most uh, KOS scripts, you're supposed to use wait until blah, but I had to, had to use this because the thing overflows and becomes negative. So that doesn't seem to work. So there, there we've got the thing running and it's magic. It just flies. It's beautiful. So once the thing iterates through these, it uh, will then reset everything by going back. But we don't need to worry about that. I can just you know, run this again, run this as many times as I like. There's a few ways we could you could iterate on this. You could add more bars to the uh, more like you could have a four way thing so that it is producing more consistent thrust. You see that it only really produces thrust when the stuff is being, uh, when the sides are coming down or up. Uh, it, if you have four of them, you'd have much smoother thrust and you would have a vehicle which would be far more controllable. Uh, if you could make the controls, if you could make the fuel transfer faster, again, you would get more thrust. If you could make the arms longer, more thrust, there's so much you can do to make this thing more powerful and or silly. But hey, I'm sure there will be plenty of readers out there who will have uh, fun to do fun things to do with this. Until then, I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.